Are you farming artifacts and you are in dire need of artifact EXP? Do you feel like the artifact EXP bottles from the teapot isn't sufficient enough to max out your new 5 star flower? Now, what if I told you that you can farm for free artifact EXP in the overworld? It's free real estate. Hello everyone, Ethereal here today with another guide video. And today we'll be looking at how you can get free artifact EXP through the overworld of Tavad. So, basics. Did you know that there are actually multiple spots in Teyvat that you can interact with which gives you like free 1 star and 2 star artifacts? Well, these spots are everywhere and they have varying respawn times. Like certain locations respawn every 12 hours while most respawn in 24. Now, why? You may be wondering why you should do this. What does this offer to your account? Is this really worth it? So let me spill all the info. First of all, there's a limit to how much of free artifact EXP you can gain in the overworld, which would be 60,000 EXP. That is roughly 143 one-star artifacts. And if we look at this artifact level chart that I got from the Genshin Wiki, that alone could bring a single 5-star artifact from level 0 all the way to level 9. And according to the Genshin Wiki, this amount of EXP is equivalent to 4 artifact domain runs, or 80 resin worth of artifact exp which in my experience each run takes 20 minutes average so spending 20 minutes to get 10 hours and 40 minutes worth of artifact exp given how long it takes for a single resin to regenerate base in real time is very much worth it if you really want to level up your character's artifacts and get them geared out though alternatively you could also sell these artifacts for mora in your inventory since the artifact EXP to the Mora ratio is 1 to 1, you could basically sell all these artifacts and you could gain 60,000 Mora from selling them. That is equivalent to a single 20 resin run from a golden leyline at the highest level. So for the location, there will be a timestamp of me doing the runs with all the different locations, so if you want to skip to that, you can go ahead and do that. So teams. So the team that I usually run for my runs consists of Sayu, Yolan, Skara, and Rosaria. This team allows me to traverse the overworld with the most ease while minimizing stamina consumption. I run my Sayu with a Sacrificial Greatsword in case I run into any enemies and I can uh, kick them at the end of her rolling animation. And if I trigger the Sacrificial Greatsword passive, it will reset the cooldown on my skill which allows me to roll again and go further. While Yolan's elemental skill is generally great for traversing and my Yolan being C2 allows me to travel quite a good distance. Mondora, I don't really have to say anything, he just flies. And he does it really well. And lastly, Rosaria is mostly a flex slot, but she's a unique one because her exploring passive allows the party to move faster. Specifically, it gives the party a 10% movement speed bonus at night, from 6pm to 6am. On the contrary, you could also use Deya for this slot because Deya has the exact same exploration passive, but it's for during the day. And if you notice, my team also benefits from the uh, Nemo resonance, which decreases stamina consumption and also increases the team's movement speed. Although, if you don't have any of these characters, here are some alternatives that you can slot into your team. So we have Kea, Razor, and Kazuha, because their exploration passive decreases sprinting stamina consumption by 20%, thus basically allowing you to traverse more. For gliding, we have Amber, Kale, and Venti. For climbing, we have Xiao and Candice. Keep in mind that passives of the same nature do not stack. So you don't actually need Keia and Kazuha in the same team. Or otherwise, you could also use food to aid your exploration. As you may know, there are actually some adventure dishes that basically restores your stamina, while some of them actually decreases stamina consumption in things like climbing, sprinting, or gliding. The notable foods would include the delicious sticky honey rolls and the delicious minty meat rolls for how useful they can be. Also, did you know that there is a gadget that can increase your gliding speed? It's called a Red Feather Fan and you can obtain it from Inazuma's Reputation System as a reward from level 5. Be sure to start grinding that reputation and bounties if you really want to take advantage of this. And that aside, did you know that there are actually some NPCs in Tevat that sells artifact for Mora? So you could buy these artifacts for, for Mora and each shop has a different restock period, most of it being every 7 days or every week, with one shop in particular that refreshes its stock every day. And if you don't know where they are, here is the footage of the location for these NPCs and their respective price.
With all this info, you could go check out the timestamps in the video for the exact location of the artifacts that respawn every 20 hours, and you could also watch along me doing the run at the same time. With that, I hope you enjoy the run as I try to chat things up about anything Genshin related, and I hope you find this video helpful. Anyways, on to the run. I'm dumb. I forgot that I muted in OBS, but it's fine. The footage is gonna go in, but yeah. So I put a marker there so that I can kind of just know what time the artifact starts. So that way I can tell when the spawn is going to begin. And, you know, just to make sure that I do this daily, or maybe sometimes I will probably intentionally delay it or just skip a single day just so I can reset the time. But yeah, overall, I've been doing this artifact run for as long as I can remember. I think, like, I remember like when I first figured this out, I was like a very AR30, AR40, and I was still watching a bunch of um, Genshin content creators like uh, Mr. Asian Guy, um, still watching Code and a little bit of Slice up to this day, and, and a few other people here and there. Like I remember Sekapoko, but we, I guess we don't really talk about that because I don't even know what he's up to. But I remember when I was basically running around the Overwall when it was like peak COVID, everyone was basically stuck at home. I had online classes for college, and um, I would, I realized that certain locations like i realized that some of these locations i don't remember where exactly the artifacts respawn so i thought to myself wait isn't this technically farmable and then after you know scaring around looking around different things like on the wiki or even youtube i stumbled upon a video by asian guy about him just you know basically doing the exact same thing that i do but maybe just a little bit different about him talking about or oh, how certain spots respawn around every 12 hours but most of these spots respawn every 24 hours, how you can basically farm free artifact EXP. And from there, I just kind of, well, I followed the video and I tried to look a bunch, I tried to look for like a bunch of information at different parts of the internet. And the route that you see right now is basically ingrained to me because I've done this so many times. It's, uh, it's, it's basically like muscle memory. Like I'm, I'm not even thinking right now. I'm just like using my characters, just traversing. And uh, yeah, like I remember back then I used like a venti bunny hop strategy because um, in my very first guide video for this freaking free artifact EXP thing, like way back in the day, it was so like scuff. And I think I recorded myself doing this on stream with like, and I had like a call that day, so I sounded horrible. Uh, when I did that, I think I was using a venti. And if you guys don't know the bunny hop technique, it's essentially if I were to like, Skara is like a medium short boy, right? And he only works with medium short boy. So if you sprint and then you space, you like you just jump every time you like reach the ground, you actually can somehow like preserve stamina and gain this kind of momentum to jump to just propel you faster than you would from regularly sprinting. Also, if you do follow my exact route, from uh, my experience, it's always guaranteed that these events would just come around. Oh whoops, that's the wrong character. So you can kind of get a bit of free mora, a bit of free artifact. Um, a little bit of free friendship exp if you farm friendship for your characters but mostly just a little bit of resource that you can see the drops right there like 10 exp 1.7 kimura and some random rock i don't know why they even give us one but i guess that's better than nothing uh but i've been doing this for quite a while there were certain days where i didn't do it because i can't be bothered i think that was like a few months ago and then i gained a newfound motivation to just try to build every single character that i have in my account and try to pull for ev at least every four star character in the game just to try out, you know, any possible team, look at the theory crafting side of things. Like I reliably use uh, the Kaching Mains website because they are very well known, dedicated theory crafters. And obviously, one of the members, if you don't know, is Mr. Zajef77, one of the most prominent, uh, one of the biggest um, content creators, also a theory crafter for the Genshin community. So yeah, mostly I've been enjoying building all these different characters. I've been having fun. Uh, there are certain characters that are not as good, there are certain characters that are good, but yeah. Awesome. I mean, if you want to talk about that, eh, like as you guys know, maybe if you watch my stream, but maybe if you don't, I have, I think about nine triple crown characters right now, and I have like five spare crowns. I'm currently 
waiting for 3.8 to come up. So because by the time this video is recorded, we are like one week away from patch 3.8. And I have pre-farmed for you, love, from back in freaking 3.4. Like I farm enough to triple crown Eula because I heard, you know, rumors or leaks about how Eula was coming out at like 3.5 or 3.6 or whatnot. And then apparently they change it at like the last minute. And well, if you follow my channel long enough, uh, I got so pissed off. I basically pulled for the Yolan banner because during the time we had like a very incredibly stacked uh, Hu Cao Yolan rerun. Obviously the weapon banner is Staff of Homa and Elegy. I didn't pull for that because I already had Homa for my Hu Cao. So I was like, you know what, I may as well, I'm gonna pull for Yolan. I, ha I have like 160 pulls with like zero, like very fresh pity. And I was just like, I'm like, you know what, at least if I can get C1 Yolan, if I get C2, it doesn't really matter. But if you watch my Abyss videos or you follow my stream, you would know the results of that. But you can go watch the video to see what happened. But basically I won 50-50 twice and I got my C2 Yolan and she's been amazing. Like C2 does buff the damage and the Hydro application, but to be honest, I... I can't really tell the difference. I can definitely say that the damage increase is noticeable with the C2, but to be honest, I have been appreciating her Constellation 1 because like Yulan, I feel like is one of those characters, like because she scales off HP, she has a skill that gives her a lot of mobility that's really helpful for exploration. On top of her burst, just like doing a lot of damage and just, you know, just being really good, at least comparable to like Sing Chu. Like, I feel like Yulan is really the character that you can you can kind of just take out in any situations, whether it be Abyss or whether it be like Domains or Co-op or just regular world exploration. And I'm pretty sure she can just clear anything and everything just fine. Which is why I feel like if I were to do like a tier list of 5-star characters, I think Yulan would be up there. Obviously, like maybe S tier or SS tier, how whatever kind of tier is that you guys like, because for some reason, I don't even know how S gets above A, like I don't, I don't know how grading system works around here, but yeah, but Yelan has been, I would say, one of my more enjoyable and probably one of my worthy Triple Crown characters. And yeah, everything's been good. Speaking of Triple Crown characters, oh my god, dude, like... Okay, so if you guys don't know what characters I have Triple Crown, I'll probably like make a video just to show the account progression or just to show my overall progress on building every single character in my account right now. Uh, so my first Triple Crown, I believe, was Noel because to be honest, I was a Noel mate back when the game was still new. Back then, I still didn't know much about the game. And there's still something about using her burst just the sound effects from her burst, like every swing, just feels so heavy. Like, it feels like a proper Claymore character, unlike other Claymore characters. I think other Claymore characters, maybe aside from Beidou, it doesn't feel very solid when you do the swings. But Noel, when you use a Claymore to do, use a burst with a Claymore to just do the giant swings, there's something about swinging a big sword and hearing that, that, that really heavy hit sound effect that just feels really satisfying. But unfortunately, as a Noelle main, and someone who's been playing the game for basically almost like 3 years, she she sucks. Like, the fact that some characters in the game just cannot generate skills from her elemental from that elemental energy, you know, given like Barbara. Uh, Lisa is kind of conditional, like you have to hold your E for that. Uh, Chi Chi especially, and they, they make it like a constellation to fix it. And Noelle, Noelle has like no constellations to give her more energy. It's horrible. Like, you would... If you play a lot of Noelle like I do, you would feel like Noelle would have like an 80 burst cost, right? No, she actually has a 60 burst cost. But because how energy hungry she is, even using characters like Goro or Ningguang, it's not enough. Like I feel like the best energy, um, the best Geo battery character right now would probably be Traveler and just slap on like Favonius or something because I feel like his barrel cooldown, like tra Geo Traveler's damage and energy generation is actually quite considerably good. Although I haven't really been using Geo Traveler, maybe one day I'll make a video of like running the Abyss with a Geo Traveler build. But I, the one reason why I don't really want to swap off Dendro Traveler is because loadouts are not a thing. Uh, for crying out loud, Hoyo, please put more quality of life options when 3.8 comes around, or maybe maybe by the time Fontaine comes out, maybe maybe I can smoke a little bit of that copium, or maybe just inhale some nice nice co copium to just believe that. Hoyo will put in quality of life updates that will make the game better in the long run, but I mean, I know they will. It's just when exactly, we don't really know. So yeah, that aside, 
Uh, in terms of characters that were triple crown, Noelle was the first. The second, I believe, was Ayaka. Because I remember when I saw the design for Ayaka, like, I think we all know Ayaka has been confirmed since beta, right? But we just never knew when she was coming out. And people were like, oh, AR-42, free Ayaka, free Ayaka. That, that was, that, that was some um, hoax. That, that was some um, horse dung. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I censoring myself? Yeah, that, that was ridiculous. That was all fake rumors. If you guys don't remember fucking Majestic Multigaming, I used to watch that guy until I realized the only thing he does in his videos is he just uploads like four videos per day doing 10 minutes of Reddit review and five minutes of just staring at leaks, putting, reading stuff out of like a notepad and everything is just unconfirmed. Thank goodness he stopped making Genshin content because he's really spreading like fake news, man. Um... Yeah, so Ayaka, I got her in 2.0. I've pre-farmed her thanks to certain, you know, you know, you know, beta information, obviously. And she's still my best character. I do have her skin. Well, she's not my best character, but I still love her design. She reminds me of Diluc if it was like a sword character in Cryo. So yeah, she's great. Uh, the third triple crown character, which I enjoy the gameplay, but I'm not like a big simp. Or I'm not like a big, um, like crazy, like down bad kind of person is probably Hu Tao. Like, I think Hu Tao, I do enjoy Hu Tao's personality. I do like her appearance. I do, obviously, her Japanese voice actor, Rie Takahashi, or they call her as Rieri or something like that. I don't know. My friend is a Hu Tao sim, not me, though. Uh, I do enjoy her quite a bit. She's actually, I think, my one of my best. I think she is my best, my strongest character in the account right now, doing a lot of damage. Unfortunately, I can't be bothered to farm for 4 Crimson, so I gave her 4 Gilded Dreams because that... Uh, the performance of Gilded Dreams is, I think, a little bit weaker than Crimson, but, you know, like, you know, the Gilded Domain is really good. So you're bound to get, like, good artifacts regardless if you're doing uh, artifact farming for your Dendro characters. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? The fourth character that I got crown. Uh, um, why can't I remember this? Was it Shen He? I think it was Shen He. Yeah, yeah, it was. So Shen He... I'm gonna say this out loud. As someone who has... C0 R1 Calamity Queller, but I have two of that. I actually do I have two of that? Oh yeah, I did because I pulled her in the shower banner. Yeah, I should have done that. Um C0 Shen He is just not worth it. You're honestly better off just getting Diona with like Phone of Bless or just running, I don't know, Rosaria as like a support for Perma Freeze Ayaka rather than using Shen He. Because even though Shen He can buff the damage, I feel like it just takes so long. To just do like a proper rotation in, a, in an Ayaka Perma Freeze team, and even then, it's like I feel like I don't stay on field as Ayaka very often. While I tried running like a Diona Perma Freeze in the current, you know, patch 3.7 Abyss for the first half, and honestly, it ran pretty well. And, and keep in mind, I tried obviously Venti is the best one, right? Venti is the best support, but I also ran Kazuha. Obviously, Kazuha is pretty good. No, Sucrose, yeah, Kazuha's counterpart, uh, C6 Sucrose. I ran that. And I, I've been running Sucrose a lot recently, and I've been preferring her over Kazuha, mostly because she is a, an animal Kali's character, and has and she has basically three charges of a skill with Sacrificial Fragments, while Kazuha only has two, unless you have like C1 and Sacrificial Sword. But um, I, I've been enjoying using Sucrose a lot, so I got a better understanding of how her burst kind of groups enemy together, and how her skill really like crowd controls the enemy, and it actually works. I, I think I cleared the first half with my Ayaka Freeze with like what, Diona, was it Sing Chiu or Mona? Was it Barbara? I think I tried Barbara at one point, but it was like painful. I think it was Mona, Diona, and maybe, um, what's her name again? Sucrose. And I used Sucrose Burst to try to group them together. Like, I used a skill to stagger the Whopper Flowers, and I try to use, um, the Burst to keep them consistently grouped up while they are being frozen. Ideally, I do find that if you want a consistent Hydro application, you do kind of want to swirl Cryo for the Vivi Shred, but you do want to... Uh, let the burst absorb Hydro so that when Mona's skill end, you can actually still maintain a little bit, a few more seconds of like Hydro application. And that should help you consistently freeze the enemies. Okay, so moving on. Yeah, Shen He, biggest regret. I wouldn't say it. She's not, not my biggest regret. Like, I had fun. She is super attractive. We all know that. I'm sure some sims are waiting for the Shen He rerun, but to be honest, probably should have, should not have never pulled for her weapon. My English sucks. <laughs> I shouldn't have pulled for the weapon. I had my fair share of fun with her, but I don't really use her anymore in any teams because I don't really I don't really enjoy running Puma Freeze as much as I used to. So there's that. So waifu number five, well obviously is Yolan. Because I remember looking at like the, the, the subreddit, like the leaked subreddit, 
and I was like, okay, there's this bow character. There's this hydro bow character that's coming out in like patch uh, two point uh, two point something. And then I was like, all right, instantly sold. She sounds like a hot mommy, like hot like mommy milf character. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's how you we got Yolan until today. And now Yolan is probably one of my better characters, and she's probably my highest constellation aside from my C2 Raiden. And I've been enjoying her a lot. Also triple crown. And then waifu number six is one of my OG four star uh, characters, a uh, pirate mommy Beidou. And recently in the current abyss, I've been learning to play Beidou a whole lot more. And to be honest, like once you actually get used to the enemy patterns and you get used to your ping, right? When you use your parry at the right time, she doesn't have as much energy problems as... She doesn't have that bad of an energy problem. Assuming you can get the perfect parry out. Like, I think getting the perfect parry is like her biggest source of damage. And also like, you know, if you guys don't know this, uh, Beidou regular like tap E, if you, if you just do the regular parry without like countering it properly, you get like less energy compared to if you do like a perfect counter because that's a passive and damn the damage and the energy generation is insane also i've mentioned this in my abyss guide video which i recently uploaded but beidou is amazing for the first half of this abyss like i ran like beidou aggravate with sucrose fischl and yaoyao oh my god beidou and fischl with aggravate like even with the most like f2p looking investment absolutely obliterates like the first half like the chain the chain damage from her burst and then just combine with aggravate oh, damn she she be doing some nice damage i tell you uh right so waifu number seven and waifu number eight i think is probably my biggest regret uh this was in the sumeru arc of my account number seven well was candice i think i don't really need to explain why i love the design because you know you know, we all know the whole quote, right? Of, of playing waifu over meta, or just just find characters that you s that seems fun to play, pull for the character, enjoy, and have a good time. Because meta is only based on whatever does the most damage and whatever is the most efficient. Obviously, because that's what the name is called. But it is quite disappointing that Candice could have been something, but Hoyo just made her so bad like her damage from her parry even the like like i've tried giving her staff of hoba with like double tenacity double heart of death and it, like, on the highest i could hit is like what 30 like 18 8 17 18k pure hydro a vape is like 30 40 50k but even then it's like with very shred and it's like come on man that's like pitiable damage <laughs> even Be beido can do that normally with just aggravate like, that is such a sorry excuse for damage. And even her supporting capability. Like, one of my, I would say, one of my decently or most viewed videos. Well, it isn't, it isn't exactly the most viewed. But basically, I made a video about comparing Candice's buff compared to Yunjin's normal attack buff. And, well, obviously, Yunjin is better. Because Candice, using her burst, right, it buffs elemental normal attacks. So I tried to use Xiao. To see the damage comparison, I could have used another character, but I don't have another character. And yeah, it wasn't really that great. And then, since we are at the last spot to end things off, Nilo was number 8. Her talents doesn't do much. I ran DPS Nilo, and... Ah, yeah, you can see that I no longer run DPS Nilo. If I could get refunds on my crowns, I would get my 6 crowns back. And um, even running an F2P, like... What, what do you call this again? Freaking Bloom Nilo. The damage is good. However, without Key of Kachni's suit, you cannot cap on the damage bonus from Ascension 4. Because in order to get the maximum damage bonus from this, you need, I think, about 74,444 HP, which is basically like 75k, right? And it's impossible to reach that HP level, no matter how much artifact rolls you have, even with Hydro Resonance. Because you need Key. Like, Key of Kachni's suit, her weapon gives so much HP that it's just absurd. Uh, yeah. That those are the two characters that I would like to get refunded. Anyways, we are reaching the end of the video and let me just show you guys how much artifacts I've gotten. So these are all my 5 star, 4 star, well, uh, 4 star artifacts and anywhere below this is all my free 1 star artifact EXP. Uh, what am I going to use it on? I'm going to use it on my Goro to try to finish my current Goro build so I can finish, um, I can move on to the next character and just get everyone geared out so I can make more videos about me running the spiral abyss well if you guys enjoyed the video and you guys um somehow stick through this long 18 20 minute part of the video 
uh, give it a like, subscribe for more content. I will try to push out more Abyss videos and more Genshin related videos mostly and maybe like mostly guide videos. So hopefully I can kind of give information, precise and concise information about different things in Genshin so that, you know, if you don't know them yesterday, well, if you watch my video and then now you know. And hopefully you guys find that useful along with this guide video too. Anyway, so I've, once again, Hopefully you guys enjoy sticking around and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, have a good day and I will be practicing my piano and working on the next guide video. Yeah, so have a good time and peace out.